So this is really helpful um, because we know that our sieve can only take us to the square of the largest uh, prime number used to build it. And in this case, um, our largest number here is 11. So, uh, you know, the square of 11 is 121. So any uh, locations in the hands of the clocks that suggest uh, a number higher than 121 is not usable in the sieve because you're past the range uh, that the sieve is going to give you. So now we're back at the um, formula I created for uh, counting the number of twin primes up to a certain number n. Um, and let's look at this term here, p minus 2 over p. Um, why does it over overshoot uh, the number of twin primes? Well, the reason is that it's using all the combinations allowed in this image um, for your probability. Every single combination, any every single uh, possible location is being used in this formula. But wait a minute, what if one of those combinations suggests a number higher than the square of the largest number used to build the sieve? Well, if it suggests a number like that, then it's not usable in the sieve and we can't include it in this formula. So that's why it's overshooting because we're including more probabilities than we're allowed to include. So what do we do now? Um, we need to tell this formula that it can only use the numbers or the combinations that uh, suggest a number uh, below the square of the largest number used to build the sieve. Um, to do that I actually have to call my uh, little brother Andres and uh, he's really good with Excel and he created a spreadsheet that does this. It tells you how many how many combinations will surpass the square of the largest number used in the uh, to build the sieve. And as it turns out up to P equals 13 you can only use 84 percent of all the combinations you have here. So you have to multiply this formula by point po uh, by 0 0.84 so I want you guys to see what my little brother did here so we can have a glimpse of what's happening uh, with the modular mathematics. Um, he put in this row uh, five prime numbers, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13. And then we start out putting in uh, these numbers where the three can fall. And it just repeats itself. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, all the way down. We do the same thing with the five. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. Same with 7, 11, and 13, all the way down. Uh, wherever you have two numbers repeating themselves in these sequences, in these rows, here, 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 then you have a multiple of the numbers at the top of the column. For example, here, 1 and 1 suggest that these two numbers at the top here, 3 and 5, um, are giving us a multiple down here. So let's look at another one. Um, let's see, 3 and 3 here. We have a multiple of 3 and 5. So what we're doing is seeing what the multiples we're getting are and then seeing when those uh, combinations we're getting in these rows will give us or will suggest a number higher than the square of the largest number used, which in this case it's uh, 13. So we're trying to see where the numbers are greater than 69, uh, sorry, 169. Now don't look at this, uh, at these uh, columns here. Uh, they're just uh, for our own sake of uh, finding the results. What matters is the information in, in these columns and all these uh, different uh, locations now these columns go all the way down to uh, 15,015 different combinations and uh, if you look at it closely 15,015 is uh, the, mul the common multiple of these numbers that's uh, the amount of combinations you can have using these numbers now I don't want to go much deeper into this because um, I, even though I am tackling the mathematics 
uh, in this spreadsheet, um, I don't really need uh, a mathematical formula to express all this that's happening here uh, in order to prove uh, the twin prime conjecture. So we're just going to keep going. Now that 16% of uh, combinations that surpass the, uh, the square of the largest prime number used to build the sieve uh, seems to dwindle out uh, as p gets higher. That means that our estimate here is going to be uh, more precise um, as you have higher and higher uh, p or prime numbers in this uh, term here. I have yet to find a formula uh, to express uh, that percentage mathematically but I don't really need it to prove uh, the infinity of twin primes. Now uh, here I've rewritten our estimate for counting uh, twin primes uh, to include that ratio we're talking about which we do not know yet the uh, mathematical formula for. Now here I've written uh, two separate formulas. Uh, the first one is for counting regular prime numbers as we saw before and I've uh, put included here uh, ratio 1. Uh, and the second formula is the one we were just looking at now. Uh, it's, it's, I'm just calling it ratio 2 times the uh, formula for counting twin primes. Uh, let's think about this for a second. Is there any difference between ratio 1 and ratio 2? I mean, we're applying the same concept of uh, getting rid of the non-allowed uh, combinations to this formula and to this formula. So these two ratios are the same for both formulas, even though the formulas themselves are different. Uh, the, this formula here for twin primes dwindles or, or um, approaches zero a bit quicker than this first one here, which means there are uh, less twin primes than there are regular primes. Additionally, the Greeks showed that uh, there is an infinite number of uh, prime numbers and uh, that's going to help us out a lot because for this formula, the first one, to uh, always grow, uh, this it means that this ratio allows for this whole pr uh, term to grow. Let's think of uh, this term here as the uh, gas pedal. And uh, this ratio uh, would be the brake. If there were a finite number of uh, primes, then that means that this ratio, or the brake, is winning over the uh, gas pedal. But since there, we know, in fact, that there are infinitely many primes, then uh, that means the gas pedal ultimately wins and the ratio allows for this term to grow uh, infinitely. Well, uh, if that's true and we know it is, then this ratio must also let this term here grow uh, infinitely because these two ratios are the same because we're applying the exact same concept in both of these terms to uh, not overshoot uh, the amount of primes or twin primes we're trying to count. Thinking about it in a different way, for there to be a finite number of uh, twin primes would require that there are also, or there is also, a finite number of regular primes, which we know is not true and it's a logical fallacy. So the only logical conclusion is that there has to be an infinite number of twin primes. And this should prove, um, I believe it proves, the twin prime conjecture. All in all, uh, thanks a lot for watching. Um, it's been quite a ride uh, doing all these things, and uh, it's been a lot of fun studying prime numbers. And the uh, journey is not over yet. Um, I'm glad some people are a part of it with me, and I'm glad you're watching this video. Hope you enjoyed it, and uh, remember, um, I got some uh, posters and I got some uh, wallpapers I'm selling, so if you're interested, let me know. Um, this, I'm going to show you my website address, so you can um, go to it and, and find more information. 
And to do that, I gotta go all the way out here again. Um, this is kind of like what the poster looks like, but uh, the colors are inverted for the circles and um, these vertical lines that uh, represent the prime numbers. Um, it says, you know, prime numbers and orderly chaos. And uh, I got this uh, cool text here. And you got prime numbers from 20,249 to 20,611. This is my website, uh, www.sivesofchaos.com. And um, I hope you enjoy the website. You guys uh, have a good day, night, wherever you're at. Uh, enjoy your day. Thanks. All right, so welcome. Um, I'm going to be talking to you about prime numbers in general, uh, but I'm going to focus most of my energy on twin primes. And by uh, the end of this video, which is about an hour long, I'm going to be talking about the twin prime conjecture, which uh, states or suggests that there are infinitely many twin primes. This has not been proven yet. Um, now, my name is Carlos Perez, and uh, I'm a mechanical engineer. Uh, from South America, but I live in the United States now, and I've been here for about five years. Um, now, why prime numbers? Uh, about 11 months ago, I was uh, reading Yahoo News, and there was one article about a uh, $250,000 prize for anybody that could find a prime number up to one billion. Now, I didn't see the word digits, and uh, you know the number one billion and the number of one billion digits are two very different numbers. Uh, one billion digits is uh, inconceivable, pretty much, while one billion is only uh, ten digits. Now, I'm really glad I made this mistake, because um, otherwise, if I had realized it was one billion digits, I may not even have bothered to study prime numbers in the first place. So, um, let's get started.